What is up guys? Welcome to a beautiful day in Missouri. Okay, maybe it's not that beautiful. It's been raining all day, but we have needed it. All the grass is dead. Anyway, today, guys, we are going to get started on the Suburban Drop. And I, when I say get started, I'm going to show you guys this in the whole video. But the downside is I'm waiting for some parts that are going to be here tomorrow. I want to start in the back, and uh, we'll talk about all the parts that I'm going to be using as I go. And I will list them in the description, like always, with links if you guys want to do the same thing. But the reason I want to start in the back, over the front... Um, the springs that I'm going to be using are the same ones that I've used on all the Tahoes that I've done. So I need to know how far the back is going to come down because it's not going to be adjustable really. And I want to know that before I get to the front because the front is adjustable and you'll see with the parts I'm using um, why we're doing what we're doing. But the downside is I am waiting for the DJM hardware kit for the back. It's supposed to be here tomorrow, but I want to go ahead and get started. So what we may end up doing, starting on the back, get the springs in, get it set down so I can get a measurement and then go to the front and start on it and then we may have to come back to the back. It just depends on how soon it gets here. Like I said, I'm starting today and this stuff isn't supposed to be here tomorrow. So we'll just see kind of how far I get. But the very first thing I want to do is I want to take a measurement and I rarely do this. I don't know why I never do this, but I'm gonna take a measurement all the way around and record those numbers. And then I'm gonna slide some bricks or some stops in front of the front wheels and we are gonna get this thing off the ground. Now guys, I am going to show you just like I did on the free travel mod, which we've already done. So if you guys have not done the free travel mod, um, I will post a link up here above. You need to do that before you're going to do what I'm getting ready to do. So watch that video first, and then this one will address everything else as far as the lowering goes. But let's uh, get some measurements. I will tell you guys before I start, and then we will lift it up from the center of the rear end get some jack stands um, just in front of where the lower control arm is and I will show you guys all that but let's get started so at this point I went ahead and took the wheels off and got it on jack stands so jack stands like I showed you in the um, travel mod video are right on the thick part of the frame in front of your lower control arm your rear lower control arm here same thing on the other side I lifted from the center of the axle um, and that's just how I lift these things guys. I will tell you that I probably should have ordered some brakes at the same time But we'll have to do that at another time. So the original measurements. So what we started out with we have here so we have the uh, Before numbers on the driver's side front 34 and a half driver's side rear 37 Passenger side front 37 and 5 8 and I actually got those numbers backwards um, That's actually the passenger side rear. So it's actually 5 8 higher on the passenger side but the front is 34 and 5 eighths. So the front's pretty dead on as far as being level. I uh, generally don't have a lot of Chevy lean in these um, like your trucks do, but uh, this is our starting point. So at this point, the very first thing we're going to wanna to take off is um, your sway bar end links. That's where I'm gonna start. These guys here now, um, generally guys, these are an 18, I believe, and the center wants to spin. So what you may have to do is get a wrench and loosen the 18 and then you're gonna have to put something in the center i'll give you guys that size here in just one second i think it's a t40 or a t30 um, but we need to get this loose and i'm going to go ahead and take it off both top and bottom because the the kit that i'm waiting on to come in the mail will replace these so we do need to get those out of the way first so before i uh, loosen this up there is one other thing and guys what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back and forth so i'm only going to show you one side because it's identical but we need to unhook this guy just to give us a little room for it to move when the axle comes down. So I'm just unplugging it there. Um, a common issue is this getting a bunch of tension on it and pulling loose. So a lot of people send me messages when I've done the Tahoe and say, my uh, service stability track or my service ABS lights on. Guys, this is your ABS sensor and it goes up to the top of the frame. Let's see if I can move the camera up here behind this. It goes up on top of the frame and plugs in right back here. And a lot of times they're not plugged in real great. And uh, just the tension from doing this will unplug it on the top side. Also, um, I always route airbags in the inside of the springs. And sometimes that, you hit that line and unplug it. So that is the first place I would check if you get it back together and you have service ABS or service stability track on. That is the first thing I would check because especially on one of these, it doesn't have the ride height sensors, so we don't have to mess with that. But now that we've got that loose, I'll move the camera back down here. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy loose. Now, like I said, it's an 18. 
the center of it isn't a Torx. I don't know why I said that. It's actually a six millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead. I like to use an impact to try to get it loose, and it's probably a good idea to spray it, but I didn't I didn't have time to let it set. As you can see, it's spinning, but I like to do that to get it loose. And we will use an 18 on the outside or on the inside. And then that six millimeter on the inside. And if you had time to spray this with WD-40, it'd be a good idea. I probably should have done it anyway. It wouldn't have taken much. It is tight. Goodness, when it gets to the end, it gets way easier. So once you get that out of place, your other one is kind of in a bad spot. Um, it's behind the shock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the shock up see if I can move the camera here. The shock down here is a 21 millimeter. So I'm gonna put a 21 on my impact and then a 21 on the back side and we'll get that shock loose. And um, once you get the bolt out of the shock, you do need to keep it because you will be reusing it. I will be replacing shocks as well. Now that we've got that out of the way, we should be able to uh, lower the rear end a little bit. I've still got pressure on it from the jack, so let me do that. It should give us the ability to swing the shock out of the way and get to the top of the um, sway bar bushing here. So now I was able to move it a little bit and get back behind it. Now on this one, there is also that six millimeter in the center, but there's an 18 on the back side. So you can technically loosen it without uh, using that center section. Now once you get this bolt out, you can basically um, let this sway bar fall. You can see I've already done the other side, otherwise you'd have more tension. But you are not going to be reusing these sway bar end links, so you can put them to the side. Uh, I do like to keep this stuff. The other thing, guys, I was noticing, this has a little more pressure than what I like on this line, like I just unhooked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unhook it from the frame as well so we have maximum amount of travel. I mean, it's not crazy yet, but I have a feeling once I go down a little more, it's going to cause a problem. You can just use a plastic pry tool. I just had these out when I did the free travel mod, so shouldn't have any issue with them being real tight if you've done that and already taken them out before. So at this point, guys, all we need to do is your shocks are released, your uh, tension on your sway bar is released, um, the sway bar you can see is just dangling down here. So I'm going to go ahead and let the rear end down as far as it can possibly go. And then that'll give us the ability to get these springs loose. You can see they're already moving around in the pocket. I don't know how much more uh, it's going to go down. Let me release it real quick and let's see. So at this point we're off the jack. And um, generally... I was gonna say, sometimes you need a pry bar, but it looks like it's gonna come out. Now I do keep the top and the bottom, both these, um, and I reinstall them on the new springs. So I'm gonna go grab the new springs. We'll talk about what they are. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one out, but I'm gonna go grab both the new springs. We'll talk about what they are because I did have a viewer send them to me, so they are used, but um, same thing I would buy if I were doing this kit. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to. So we obviously got the old spring out and you can see it here on the left. 
in comparison to this guy. Look at the difference. I mean, it's, it's obviously substantial. And a lot of questions I get asked is, if you search this part number that I will link below, which is a um, Beltec spring, it is going to pull up that it won't fit a Suburban and it won't fit a Tahoe. The reason being, guys, is it's made for a Trailblazer. But what I have found is the Trailblazer spring rides way, way better than a drop spring actually made for a Tahoe. Now, uh, with that being said, I've never had any issues with that. Um, it is softer. It's just a softer riding spring, and I, that's that's the choice that I prefer to go with. And every one that you've seen me do, this is the spring that I use. And like I said, I will link it down below. But because the spring was used, um, he did buy the airbags, which is an option that I would have done anyway. And he already installed the airbags on the inside. You can see them in here. And um, that's a good idea. Honestly, I would have done this too. And the reason being is if you ever load up a trailer or load up um, a bunch of stereo equipment or something in the back, this does give you about a half an inch generally of clearance. It's nothing like the bags on the green truck. They're not, they don't hold as much, uh, but they do help to kind of level things out if you needed to um, put an extra load in the back. So if you're going somewhere, like I said, you're putting the trailer on. But the other thing is, uh, I'll list this below too. When you're putting these in, you have to get them, I like to get them hot in hot water because they are kind of a pain to get on the inside of the spring. If you get them hot in hot water and cap the end off, you fold them up, kind of fold them around and stick them on the inside of here. Make sure you don't get any water on the inside. The other thing he sent me was these little rubber pucks that go on the top. And I've never had one of these kits come with this, but um, he did send these and I was kind of confused at first, but I noticed there's one on the other spring installed because I've never used these in the past. So this is up to you whether you want to put those in or not. I think I probably will since they're here. Um, and he did have to cut the line in order to get them in the box. So I'm going to take this line off. We are going to need to go ahead and push a little bit of line through, uh, obviously to get to the back. That's where I'm going to put the Schrader valve to air these up. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up a line. What I like to do is cut, um, cut it in half. So basically hook one here. If you're dealing with new ones, hook one here, hook one to that one, and then go directly in half and uh, cut it there is kind of how I measured off. This is cheap. You can get this stuff at a local parts store. It's just a uh, cheap airline. It's almost like vacuum line. So if it did, if you did need more, you could go get some more, but I've never had an issue. It generally comes with enough, but I'm going to get the pads on the bottom. So we have the pad that we had originally on the top. We'll set that guy on top and you can thread your airline right through the center. And then the one that goes on the bottom as well, I'm going to put those back in place. And then all we have to do is set this spring on the cup and um, well, I'll show you that. Once you have everything assembled, you can see I have my airline in place here and the rubber on the top. Uh, we can go ahead and thread this rubber line or plastic line, whatever you want to call it, up through. There's a hole right above the spring. Now, routing this right now is not a big concern because we'll go back and do that later, but you do have to get it up through the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this on this spring perch. And I know the rubber piece isn't below it, but I'll have to grab it in a second. Got it right here. Sometimes it's easier to put that in afterwards. So you can see, and the top was like this too, where the spring was resting before. And so the end of the spring is, I like to put it in the exact same place that it was. So same way with the top, it's like that as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and set this thing underneath here. And you have way more room now because obviously these springs are way shorter to move and move things around and get it where you need it to be. And make sure my rubber piece is lined up like I just told you. And it is. So at this point, we need to jack this thing up. Now, with that being said, it does help if you have two people, but it can be done with one person. I've already got the one on the other side. So once you get them both in, you need to slowly jack it up. Now, why we say slowly is because you're gonna be need to pull tension on that line that comes up from the airbag, as well as get these things centered in that upper cup. So. I'm going to see if I can lift this up and do it by myself. What you'll do is you'll be underneath uh, making sure, moving this back and forth, making sure it goes up in the proper area. We're going to start lifting. I give it a few pumps and pull some tension on both sides. And it may require you to go back and forth.
keep doing the same thing making sure there's no binding and it's gonna go way higher than it did before obviously guys because we have quite a bit less spring to put up in that pocket but if you were under here I'll show you the pocket um, here in just one second as a matter of fact I'll take you off the tripod now show you what pocket I'm talking about let me get you a little noisy you can see up up above there there's a spring pocket and you need to center that spring within that pocket so that's what we're trying to do obviously we're pulling tension in this so it doesn't get crammed up in the top of that so each time you pump you're making sure your lines good and you're getting closer to the center and then why I say it helps to have two people is it actually be awesome to have three one on each spring to guide it while somebody pumped but it can be done with one person that's what I'm gonna be doing so just uh, one or two pumps pull the line until you're all the way up in the top so at this point you can see I've got the rear end lifted all the way up and actually I'm off the jack stands at this point so you can see we're a considerable amount higher than what we were before but uh, I think at this point I'm gonna go ahead and take the shocks out because I am gonna be replacing the shocks and I don't obviously it's still the same day I don't have the rear um, suspension kit that comes with this or th that I like to use so what I might do is just kind of zip tie the sway bar up for now and then get the wheels and stuff back on it but let's go get um, for this you can reach back behind up above and get this out there's a 21 millimeter on the top side of the shock just like there was on the bottom now some people choose to take this guy out but the bolt actually comes in from the frame side so you can get a 21 right up here above and then your impact on the back side and we can get that shock out of the way so at this point I've got my impact on the inside I'm gonna go ahead and put my 21 on the outside I will say on the other side guys you may have to use a ratchet because my impact wouldn't fit up in there it's still not a big deal you can still get to it um, but we're gonna go ahead and get this 21 out and get this old shock out of the way to relieve a little bit of pressure on the rear end because it's jammed in the bottom. hard to get to. We'll get it out. socket off first. There we go. We're going to go grab the new shocks and I'll show you what I'm going with. So you can see the old shock set in here. And these are the new ones, which are obviously shorter. But, made by Belltech, you guys know that pretty much all my lowered stuff, I like Belltech shocks. I think they ride the best. Um, they just don't, they're not spongy, but they're not real stiff either. They're kind of like right in between. But, you can see, quite a bit shorter. And, the DJM kit will come with an extension. Now, the guy that sent me the, the rear part, the rear lowering kit, did send me shock extensions. And we probably could get by with using those, but... We'll explain a little more once that DJM kit comes in, but I'm going to go ahead and reverse the process, get this one in place. So right back in the same spot, the old one came out. 
This one, like I said, it's kind of a pain. There's some AC lines back here for the rear cooling. And so it makes it kind of kind of cumbersome to get it started. For now, I'm not going to tighten this, guys. I'm just going to leave it loose because we need to go back and torque these later. put the nut on the end and you should be good for now. Like I said I need to set this thing down to get a, somewhat of a measurement. The other thing is if you let this down far enough your spring might have moved out of its pocket so just make sure when you're lifting it back up uh, it centers back where it needs to be. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. I am gonna go ahead and put the bolt back in the bottom of the shock as well and the reason I'm going to do that like I said we'll be taking it back apart but just to hold this up into place while I set everything down So for the most part, I've got everything assembled in the back. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the stock um, end links back in place. I said I was going to zip tie it up, but I figured these will fit for now. Let's just skip this step if you are if you already have the DJM kit. So I'm going to get it down on the ground. Actually, I tell you what, I'm going to show you guys where I'm going to route the airlines because I can go ahead and do that, and then we'll get it on the ground, turn it around, and uh, well, we can at least get a measurement on the back to start on the front. So for routing the airlines, there's a couple things you need to obviously do. You need first off, you need to stay away from anything that moves. So basically, you know, you don't want it close to anything that it would clip it in half. You also don't want it anywhere close to the exhaust. So what I'm going to do is right above this spring, there's a, a brace um, in the frame or the floor. You can see it right there. I'm going to go over the top of it, over the top of the spare tire bracket, and all the way back here to the back, and that's where we're going to tee off. So before I set the or put the wheels on set on the ground, I wanted to show you guys. So came up over the frame like I had said. This is the driver's side here, and went to the T, and it's just pushed together. So uh, the T's up top here, and then my actual valve. Uh, there's a hole in the bumper, so I just use the existing hole. Now, if you want to move it somewhere else, you always have that option. You can drill a small hole and mount it anywhere. I just thought this was out of the way. I need to put a cap on it, but I'm gonna go ahead put the wheels on. I'm gonna put at least five pounds in these bags because it needs to have some in it um, when you're just, uh, you don't want to leave them empty. So I'm going to put five pounds in the bag after I get the wheels on and we'll set it on the ground. So at this point you can see it is obviously the next day and I did turn this thing around. I took it down the road. Now, of course, none of the bolts are tight, but I wanted to see if it settled any and it did settle a little bit. So right now we're down about uh three and a half to four inches in the back which means i'm probably going to set the front to around three inches so at this point i i think the back's going to settle a little bit more it's not quite as low as i thought it was going to be but it's close so i'm going to move on to the front at this point and then we'll just have to see if the back settles which like i said i think it will so 
Uh, we're gonna get this thing off the ground. I'm gonna put some jack stands under it, get the wheels off, and then we'll talk about what we need to do in the front and what we're gonna be using. So as you can see at this point, I've got uh, the jack under the front cross member, and then the jack stands are under the frame right where the frame gets thick, similar to what I did in the back. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take the ABS line loose, and you can see that plug's actually broken. That it's supposed to set in the frame up here. So uh, I'm gonna unplug this, and we're gonna get this unhooked. And then there's a 10 millimeter uh, on the top of the spindle here we need to get out, and then this line will be loose. Once we have that out of the way, uh, I will tell you guys, I sprayed some WD-40 on the sway bar. I sprayed it on the bottom of the strut. I sprayed it on the top of the strut. And um, that's pretty much it as far as you're gonna have trouble with getting loose. The rest of them seem to be fine. Mainly that sway bar, you're gonna wanna put some on it because generally these things just snap, uh, especially if they've been on here, if those are the original and they do look like the original. But now we need to go ahead and get the brake out of the way. So I believe it's an 18 millimeter here on the backside. Now I'm gonna take the whole thing loose. So instead of taking the caliper loose from the caliper bracket, I'm gonna take just the bracket loose. And then we're gonna to try to tie it up here on the other side. I'm also gonna put this 10 back in. And then to get the brake line loose, there's a 10 millimeter here as well. Just to give me a little more room to move that uh, brake out of the way so it's basically not dangling right here where I'm trying to do all this work. There's a spot here on the frame that I'm gonna use a, um, basically a piece of rope or a cord to hold it up uh, to get it out of my way. Generally these 18s for the caliper bracket are pretty snug so you're probably gonna have to use a breakover bar in order to get it loose. Once you get it loose, then you can come in with, I don't even think my impact will fit back here, but we can at least get a ratchet to get it loose. Probably get my impact on the bottom one. I'm gonna go grab a bungee cord to tie this thing up because it ain't gonna take long to get it out of the way. With the swivel, I'm able to get on there. Let's see if we can get this thing off and tie it up. pressure on that brake line. So, so a T30 is what you need and sometimes these things are tight. Ooh, got lucky. Man, these are so easy to strip out. Sorry if you guys are getting some wind. The wind's picking up on me. Sometimes these uh, like to rust in place too. Oh, we got lucky here. All right, so the main part is out of the way. Once your brake's out of the way, we need to get um, the hub assembly out. Now there's three 15s, kind of in a triangle shape on the back side here, and I use a breakover bar to get them loose as well. Generally, they're pretty snug. There we go. I don't know why these are, I mean they torque to quite a bit, so.
once they're loose, I'm going to put my impact on them. And zip them out of here. I'm telling you guys, I use this thing for everything now. Can't believe before I took all this stuff out by hand. It's crazy. And this is just a little one. I couldn't imagine if you had like a big one. So sometimes these guys stick, so I'm going to pop it with the hammer a couple times, and I'm just, just using a claw hammer. Oh man, you don't want to pop on the back side really because that's the casing and it's plastic, so don't hit on the back side. Uh, I'm going to go grab a pry bar and we'll put in between this plate and the spindle and we'll see if we can just pry it out a little. Once it's loose, it generally comes out. So I actually went to get the pry bar and um, I tapped it a couple more times with the hammer and it fell right out. So we're good here. At this point, I think what I'm gonna do is um, we'll probably go ahead and get the either the strut, the bottom of the strut, or tackle this guy, which that's gonna probably break. Like I said, most of the time, the sway bar end link breaks, but I believe it's a 15 millimeter. Let's check. Yeah. So we'll go grab a 15 wrench and uh, see if we can get the sway bar loose next. Now, like I said, generally these sway bars break or they're really, really snug. We're going to try it. I need to think about replacing this honestly we're gonna put it back together for now and set it aside it's actually I guess it's not as in bad a shape as I thought so I will tell you guys um, if you're not working on this and golly the winds really picking up if you're not doing side by side you need to because this needs to be loose in order to get room that you need so um, you need to take make sure you take both sides out if you're not going back and forth. Generally what I do is I show you guys on this side and then I go duplicate it on the other side. So just make sure that your sway bar at least is loose on both sides. Now that everything's out of the way, um, we're ready to start taking the actual spindle off. So 21 millimeter is what fits this guy, 24 on the bottom, 18 um, for the upper ball joint. So I'm going to start here. doesn't take much to get those loose and I like to put them back on so now let's move on to the one below here the 24 same thing I pull them all the way off and then thread them on a couple back and that last one's 18 and because this is two-wheel drive you can fit up in between here Otherwise, you'd have to do it a little bit differently, I guess. I think my extension's too long here. But I got it loose anyway. So now what we need to do is we need to take a hammer and hit here. That one's loose. And then we need to hit like right here and on the center of the bottom or on the inside. So you can move it back and forth. Actually, you can go ahead, take this one out, and then you have the ability to spin this around and hit 
on the back side and you can use a pickle fork um, I just don't like to do that just based off the fact that it ruins these so if your ball joint if you're replacing your ball joints then it wouldn't matter you can go ahead and use a pickle fork but this one's already actually loose so uh, all we got to work on is the bottom and luckily it only took a few hits and we got the old spindle out of the way so now that the spindles out of the way you need to check your ball joints and this bottom one's good the top one's it's kind of loose but I'm gonna deal with it I'm gonna live with it it's still got some grab to it it probably honestly guys if I had them here I'd replace them uh, the easiest way is to replace the whole a arm in my opinion uh, instead of trying to press this out and put a new one in it just takes forever to do that when you can just buy the whole piece and it comes with new bushings uh, for the upper A-arm. So if you have those, I will list them down in the description if you want to buy new ones. Uh, right now is a great opportunity to do that, but I'm not going to be replacing those. I'm going to move on to the strut itself. So 15 millimeter on the bottom here and then 18 on the top, but there are some wiring pieces and I'll show you guys that here in just one second. Got this 15. Now the bottom's loose. Let me see if I can, it'll be a little noisy, but we're gonna move you up here so you can see what I'm talking about. So there's 18, there's three 18s up top, but they put wiring clips on them. So all you need to do is just push those wiring clips off. And honestly, guys, you can use an 18 millimeter wrench in here, a ratcheting wrench is how I normally do it, or you can pop the hood and get the 18s from the top. So I'm gonna try to get as many from the top as I can, um, but you may end up having to use that ratcheting wrench to get the 18s and they're not very tight at all. So I have my actual impact on the top of the truck and on those 18s and I was able to get to them. So I'm gonna take them all out. I'm on the last one, it should fall loose. can reach in here easier to reach in from down here to grab them we got all three of them and then we should be able to push down on the lower a arm and it comes right out at this point we have everything disassembled so um, well we, we have some work to do on the strut so I'll, we'll get to that next and, uh, but we're ready for reassembly. So once we get the struts all hooked up and I'll show you guys that, like I said, um, we'll be ready to put stuff back together. Normally guys on stuff, I would take the time to clean this all up, uh, but I'm kind of on limited time. So I'm not, I know that's unlike me, but uh, we're just gonna start putting the struts together and get this thing back together. So at this point you need to thoroughly coat the bottom or the, well actually the top, I guess, of the strut. Uh, this is going to be the hardest thing to get loose and we need to separate the spring because we're reusing the spring we need to separate it from the actual uh, strut itself so in order to do that we've got some strut compressors here and i'll list those down in the description as well i used to rent these things and so it got to the point where i used them so often that i just bought a set but um, i'm going to hook these on here and generally this set is a three quarters so we can and I like, I will tell you guys this, I like to use a little pressure on these. And what that means is I like to leave them where the spring is still got a little pressure that helps push off that um, end piece. So we're gonna attempt to run this down and I'm get, I think it's getting ready to rain. So hopefully we can at least beat the rain. Uh oh, that broke off. That's not good. Okay. so new plan we're gonna grab uh, another piece and uh, see if we can get it I got another three-quarter that's not um, half inch drive so we're gonna have to use it so I got my other one I don't know if you guys heard that thunder it's getting ready to happen is generally how it works I usually use two of these because it jams up against the other I'm just gonna 
do this one by hand. I gotta go grab another three quarters. That's probably why the wind's been so high. Blowing a storm in. If you'll notice, let me show you where I put my three quarter. All my three quarters have a, a spot on them where um, they've rubbed up against springs, so you can barely see that they're three quarters. And so what you do is you just work your way back and forth, tighten one side down a little, then the other side, and so on and so on until the spring is somewhat compressed. Uh, I'd like to get this where it has, you know, about that much left, and then we should be good. So once you get it tightened down to where you want it, the next thing I'm going to do is this is the front of the spring. Uh, you can see, hopefully you guys can see where the um, it comes together, this little stepped piece. I'm going to mark this, and the reason being is you want to put it back together that way with this part facing forward. Um, if you don't, these things are offset, so they're not 100% true, so it won't go in the other way. So I want to mark this and then you want to line it up just like it was so you don't have any issues. So now that I got that marked and like I said I like to keep a little bit of pressure on this spring we're gonna go ahead and try to knock this top loose and I believe it's an 18 if it's not it's a 17 pretty sure it's an 18 though. Um, we're gonna attempt to knock that loose like I said this is gonna be the hardest part because a lot of times water just sets on top of this and it rusts. So the longer you let it set with WD-40 or some sort of penetrating oil, the better off you are. The other thing is get away from all your vehicles and everything because sometimes the spring does have some pressure on it once to pop out, especially the way I'm doing this to help give her some leverage. So wish me luck here. We're gonna see if we can get this thing loose. Like I said, it, it sometimes it fights you. Get it going the right way here. That is the easiest it has ever came apart. All right, so take this apart, taking all these pieces out, and you wanna, you're want you gonna put them back together the same way, so just uh, try to keep it, you see how it snapped in there? Okay, you wanna make sure that that goes back in that way. The other thing we need to do, obviously, is pull the strut out of the bottom, and then we can go grab the new stuff. We'll talk about uh, what we need to do to it. So this is the new strut that we're putting in. And so kind of how it works is, for one, it has instructions in here. We'll get to that. But you can see it has a series of rings. And so what we're gonna do is you're gonna use this new cup and it drops the actual spring down, the spring cup, and you determine how much of a lift or a drop you want based on how many rings you're gonna use. So on this, I'm gonna try to set it at three and a half or three inches and we'll talk about how many rings that's gonna take. So if you look at the instructions, it tells you with auto ride and without auto ride, how many rings you need to put on in order to obtain the drop that you want. So obviously this does not have auto ride. So zero rings, so not putting any rings, just putting the cup on there would result in three inches of drop. So we don't wanna do that. What I'm thinking is we're gonna get two inches from the spindle and I want about an inch and a half. So um, two rings on here would be a two inch drop and four rings would be a one inch drop. So obviously we're gonna go in the middle, we're gonna put three rings in it and that should obtain me an inch and a half drop and then with the two inch spindle um, for around three and a half inches. Like I said, I still think the back's gonna settle some. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll get it put together and then I'll show you before I button it all up, um, kind of the sequence of parts, what you need to put in where. So you need to take out your original bump stop and you need to replace it with the Beltec one. Um, just going to go back in the same exact way and then we can set this back in lining that up that mark that we've got right there and it's only going to want to fall in a certain way if you notice it uh, it just sets really nicely there so lining up the mark that I made with that opening now we're ready to put uh, the strut 
actually into the spring I am going to go rob the uh, piece off the bottom the little plastic piece I just think it might set a little nicer with that in place so as you can see I have it all together uh, the, I put three rings on I put the cup on I did take that piece of plastic you can see here on on the top of the ring that Belltech installs and the reason I did that is so it didn't make any noise so you just take that off your old strut uh, it doesn't say that in the instructions but guys I'm telling you it's gonna squeak or make noise if you don't do that so put that on and then I obviously you guys saw me put the bump stop in uh, all this assembly is back together the way it came out so now all we need to do is run the nut down on so when you're installing this thing, a lot of times it doesn't have the same amount of pressure. You see this ring can spin. So what we're wanting to do is line that mark back up with the exact same spot. Now, once we go to loosen these, uh, it will fall back into place. But just so you know, it will be loose uh, just because it, you're obviously a lot shorter. The spring is setting way further down. So don't worry about that. Go ahead and loosen your strut compressors off and then you can um, try to make sure this is in the right place as you're doing that. So now that we got both the struts together, uh, we're ready to reassemble. So uh, I will tell you guys that uh, for one, I moved to the other side. Hopefully you don't get as much wind noise on this side. It's really, really windy, uh, but the rain has stopped at least. So um, you got your 18 millimeters that go on the top of this guy. So we're gonna push it up into place and um, get those started. Sometimes it's a little tricky. You gotta maneuver it around. Actually, I think I'm gonna go in first here and then up this is where you'll know if you got this uh, incorrectly because they won't go in they'll only go in one way so you can't turn them you'll have to take it back apart and move it I'm just loosely threading these on so for the bottom you are going to have to spin it and it will spin but you need to take a flathead screwdriver and on your old stretch you need to get this guy off the bottom so that's what holds your actual bolt in place for the bottom so make sure that you do that if i got my bolts here these you can go ahead and get started and thread most of the way in you may have to move this guy around a little bit. There we go. Sometimes it helps if you take these off. You may have to hold them as you go in with something. But don't worry if the bottom of the struts turn the wrong way. Because you can turn the strut itself. Which is what I did here. So now I'm going to just run those down kind of snug. And... Um, I'm going to leave everything kind of loose until we get the spindle into place. So at this point we're ready to put the spindle back on back on the truck and a majority of your drop is obtained through the spindle. Now um, with this spindle that I'm going to link below, and I'll link both of them, but if you're going to use this spindle, you need to be going three inches or more in the front. Uh, it's made to where it puts a little bit of extra uh, camber in it, and that's why you would want to use this. Now there's another one, if you're only going two inches, you would use a different one, just for alignment purposes. But we're ready to get this thing into place. The other thing, there's two other things that you need to make note of. First of all, the top one, the top bolt that holds your hub assembly in, needs to go in now. Uh, and the reason being is you're not gonna be able to make that work with the upper ball joint if you don't. So make sure that you put that one in um, before you put this into place. The second thing is if you're not using a 20 inch wheel, the kit comes with a new bolt for the bottom and you're gonna have to trim this off. Now, because this thing has factory 20s, we don't have to worry about that. And if it is four wheel drive, you're also gonna have to trim this one, which if you guys have watched videos in the past that I've done, you'll notice that I had to trim these on the four wheel drive. Well, this isn't gonna get in the way of the axle because it's not four wheel drive. So I've also got this thing lifted up. So the bottom A arm, you can see that I have my jack under it. I'm gonna go ahead, put this thing in place 
and I'm using the factory bolts, so the ones that came with it, or the ones that were on the truck originally. Sometimes you gotta push it down, put some pressure on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my impact to run uh, the bottom one down first, up to tight, and then I'm gonna be pressing on this because sometimes it likes to spin, and if it does spin on you, the bottom one has a spot where you can put something in the center of it. Unfortunately, the top one does not. So on the top one, you need to get it at least far enough down to where you can get something on the end to hold it while you manually crank it down to get it snug. Uh, and we'll go back and torque it once we get more stuff together. But that is the next step here in uh, getting this together. Like I said, the very important thing you can see here if I didn't put this top one in, I would not be able to get it in at this point. So make sure that you put that top bolt in for your hub assembly. Now, like I said, this bottom one's gonna wanna spin. That's why I like to use an impact to get it snug. And it's still a little loose, uh, but I can get something in the end of it now and uh, manually tighten it at least till it's snug and the actual ball joint is seated in there. Uh, the top one, like I said, is about the same. The cool thing is I'll be able to get to it from this side. You don't have that axle playing uh, havoc on you trying to get to the top one. So you can see that the bottom one was spinning, like I said, so uh, eight millimeter is actually what fits in it. And unfortunately, I do not have a wrench that big. So I'm just using a crescent wrench to get it snug. Now once I get it snug, then we can torque it down just fine. It's just that ball joint wants to spin. Pretty common. And that should be tight enough. Now we can move on to tightening this top one. Same situation here. As you can see, it started to spin on me. Sometimes you get lucky and it'll eventually grab, but this is not one of those days for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a pair of uh, snips. I don't think, oh, it actually does have a spot in the bottom of it. I didn't think it did. I think the most of the time, uh, the reason I don't think it has one is because I trim it off because most of my stuff's been four wheel drive, but I would assume that it's, well, it's definitely smaller. It's probably that six millimeter uh, that we used on the inside of the tie rod when we were taking it apart. So it is the six millimeter, same as the inside of the tie rod. Like I said, guys, I'm used to doing these four wheel drives and you know, there's nothing to grab onto at that point. It's a real pain then. You just have to hope it grabs. Now this top one doesn't get real tight. So that's probably good enough for now. Uh, at this point, I am gonna go ahead and torque these down. So 37 is what the top one gets, and 92 is what the bottom one gets. I like to leave the uh, tie rod loose, as you can see, just because it's easier to get around torquing these if you leave it until last. You can move on the inside. So there's 92, and then we will switch out to an 18 and go to 37 on this top one. I need to spend some money on a new torque wrench that's digital. Now we gotta put 37 on the top, which isn't very much, and I don't have a lot of room to swing. I know you guys hear it clicking, but it's clicking because it's hitting. It's hitting the actual um, arm. I don't think I can get any more leverage on the other side here. No, not with the camera in the way. So anyway, I'm going to get that to 37 and then we'll go grab the hub assembly and get it into place. Now we have the hub and you'll see uh, that it's a real pain to get in uh, if you don't have that top one in place. So make sure, like I said, you guys do that. Otherwise it will not go in. And this takes a little bit to get started sometimes. Remember, you do have three of them. Once you get one started, it seems to uh, 
take hold. And you can see why I left the tie rod loose because we're going to have to put quite a bit of torque on these. These torque to 133 foot pounds. And so if you have, if you're trying to move the wheel back and forth, it's just easier to do it this way. Now this top one, unless you have a crow's foot, you can't torque it down. So if you don't have one of those, you can use a wrench and then just put like a breakover bar on the end of your wrench. Uh, that's what I've done in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down to 133 foot pounds. And uh, then we should be able to move on to the brakes at that point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unthread this and just for the time being, leave it here. Not hooking it up yet. And the reason I'm doing that is just to keep this thing from moving around while I'm putting the brake back on. So you wanna make sure that you line up that area where the retainer bolt goes in. And you can snug it down. 106 inch pounds if you guys wanna know, but I just get it snug. You don't want to over tighten it because you'll strip it or you'll have a pain getting it out next time. So we're good there. Now while that's hooked up, I'm going to grab the rotor or the caliper here and I'm going to put it back into place uh, with the 18s that came out of it. Hopefully you guys don't have to recompress your brakes. Most of the time you can get it in without doing that. And then once we get these snug down, these are 18s remember, um, I'm going to snug them down with the ratcheting wrench and then we can torque them as well. And they get torqued there's quite a bit that goes on these 144 foot pounds is what goes on the caliper bracket bolts now remember I did not take the caliper loose from the bracket so we're just use just torquing the bracket so at this point you can see that I unhooked the tie rod again and that's because I'm moving this as far as I can to torque these Eighteen millimeter at one hundred and forty four foot pounds. And we are set. Now we can go ahead and put the tie rod in place since we're done torquing everything on that end. And this generally becomes the same situation. This is a twenty one millimeter. And I'm not even going to fight with it. I'm just going to put this on the end to hold it steady while they get it snug. And then once we get this snug, this thing torques to 44 foot pounds. And I could I guess I could have used the eight, the six millimeter in the bottom but I had this handy so either way works it actually is squared off the end you could probably use a wrench to hold the bottom but to me this is a little easier this thing torqued to 44. All right, now we need to, I'll show you guys, I'm gonna move the camera here in a minute. In fact, I'll move the camera and I'll show you what we need to do with this. So for this, um, because this moved up, uh, this will no longer fit so what you need to do is we need to take this out sometimes you can pin i may have to go get a pair of pliers um yeah i'm gonna have to 
So anyway, we take this out and we're going to trim it. There's a centering dowel right here. Um, we're going to trim it off a little bit. Um, actually, I'm going to trim it off right here. Now on the other side, you're going to trim off the opposite direction because it mounts. It's kind of a mirror image on the other side. Uh, but I'm going to trim this end off. That way we can set it back in the original location. Uh, you could move it back if you wanted to. Uh, to me, I like to put it back in the exact same spot that it came out of. So in order to do that, we obviously have to cut the end off. So I'm going to go cut this off real quick with a cutoff wheel and then we'll screw or bolt this back into place. So at this point you can see I got the end trimmed off and I trimmed through this. So what's going to hold it in is the dowel that was in it originally and um, obviously the torque of the bolt. Now these are the original ones out of the spindle that you took off. So make sure you hang on to those. And um, the other thing, guys, is do not over tighten these. 106 inch pounds are what these are supposed to go to. And I have broken them in the past. So make sure that you don't over tighten them. Same way with the one on the A arm. You will snap these bolts off. They are cheap, cheap junk. I don't use a torque wrench on them, but that is the torque spec that they are meant to go to. So then we can snap this back in and same thing with the top one, 106 inch pounds on the one up here on the A-arm. We'll put it into place and then we can plug our electronics back in and then we'd be ready for uh, moving the jack out. We'll torque the bottom of the uh, strut assembly. I still haven't torqued the top because it needs to have pressure on it and um, we're getting close. Plug this back in here. You want to make sure that this connects because if it doesn't, you will get a light and then it just goes back in the frame. Now mine, I noticed are kind of worn, so I may put a zip tie on that just to make sure it doesn't move around. But now I'm going to move the camera over here and we will get um, the sway bar end links in place. Now, with that being said, you need to make sure that you're ready for uh, the sway bar end links to go on both sides because if you try to run it down on this side, and then go back into the other side, it's not gonna work. So you really wanna get them both in at the same time. So we're ready to put this sway bar in link back in. Like I said, this one's, I thought it was in worse shape than what it was, but so it goes together kind of like a sandwich. You need to just make sure rubber on metal. So we got a rubber on the bottom and then it sandwiches around and same thing on the top, just like it came out. I already put the other side in place. So, like I said, you need to be ready to do both sides at the same time. And while these do have a torque spec, I literally do it until the center doesn't spin. That's how much I tighten it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it down on both sides and then we will torque the bottom of the strut. The last thing we need to do before we actually put the wheel on this thing is we need to torque the bottom of the strut and it goes to 37 foot pounds, which isn't very much. And you know, the top's still loose. Like I said, we're going to put the wheels on, set it on the ground, and then we will torque those down. Now I do have them snug, but I don't have them torqued. So at this point we're we're complete under here i'm going to go ahead like i said put the wheel on we'll set it down and then we can torque those top nuts okay so i got everything on uh i'm going to set it down we'll see what it looks like i maybe not be able to get my jack out well i was able to get the jack out sorry they're mowing across from me you guys are going to hear it but I'm going to drive it up and down the driveway a little bit and see if it settles out. But first, let's torque down those bolts up top of the strut. So I went ahead and torqued these. 37 foot-pounds is what you need to torque them to. And then you can put the holders back on to hold the wires away from heat and out of the way. But we are good. Like I said, I'm going to move it up and down the driveway. And I need to back it back in so we can finish the rear. Woo! I think we nailed it, guys. So, um... 
yeah the front is it's almost perfect but before i step back and show you guys what it looks like we need to finish the rear because i got my djm box over there and so we need to jack this thing back up i am going to take the wheels back off of it we'll finish it up and then we'll go around and take a look at it so we got the djm stuff today like i thought and um so what this does guys a lot of people ask me do you have to have this um, is it really required honestly like I said, anytime I go more than three inches in the back, I like to use this. So what it does is this guy here uh, actually relocates your lower control arm uh, to put it back in the angle that it needs to be. Uh, so if you didn't have to do this, you definitely want to do the sway bars and the shock extension. So it all comes in this kit. And to me, it's worth, I think it's like 160 bucks. It's definitely worth it because um, it gets everything back in the proper angles. Now your sway bar is a definite you have to move your sway bar um, it needs to come up obviously those original ones are really long this shortens it up so that's what these guys do and um, the shock extension so just those two things would cost you as much as this entire kit so you might as well do it all at one time the only thing i've done so far other than unpackage is i did go ahead and screw my grease certs in a grease zert sorry with a z um, somebody corrected me in one of my videos Anyway, I went ahead and did that. And so now what we need to do is we need to put these guys into place. And in order to do that, we need to unbolt the trailing arm. So let's get under there with a 21 millimeter and I'll show you what you need to unbolt. So as you can see, all these are still loose for me just putting them in. I'm gonna go ahead and take the shock out uh, and it's loose. I just gotta take that bolt out. I'm gonna take the old sway bar end links out. And then where this is going in place is actually up here. So this rear lower control arm or trailing arm is a 21 millimeter we're going to take that bolt out and then this guy will go into place so as you can see i have both sides out and i did loosen the front of these arms as well to get them to fall uh, we'll just have to retorque them in my opinion that's a good idea the other thing guys if you don't take both sides out your um, lower control arm is going to get stuck here and you need your rear end to kind of swing back now with that being said we're going to have to maneuver it back into place when we're ready to bolt this in but while we've got the a-arm down and another reason why i wanted it down is so i can put the bump stops in if you guys notice that we cut the bump stops off but we didn't replace them so what i've got here is a new one to go in place and i'll list this in the description down below it does not come with any of the kits so we're going to get it into place while we've got room to get up behind it and then we'll get that new bracket into place now that we got the bump stop set up top, um, we're ready to put this in place. So another thing I forgot to tell you guys, there's a 13 millimeter that holds these uh, e-brake lines in place. I did remove that to get the line out of the way because otherwise you have a little bit of trouble getting um, the lower control arm bolt out. So forgot to tell you guys that, sorry about that. But now we're ready to bolt this thing up into place. So it bolts in a couple places. So it goes in like this. And then the kit comes with bolts that you put in, um, a bolt on this side, a bolt on the other side, and then a bolt through the bottom. And there's already a hole there, so it'll have it all lined up. And I'll show you guys once I get them in there and tightened up what it looks like. As you can see, I've got those in there and the bolt goes in from the outside pointing in. And I got washers on both sides and then the lock nut all tightened down. Same thing in the bottom here. There's a hole, like I said already, and these aren't side specific. So you don't have to worry about getting one on one side and one on the other. Now that we've got that in place, we're going to go ahead and grab the shock extender and I'll show you what you need to do with it. So the shock extension goes right on the back side of what we just installed and the shock's kind of in the way right now. I'm going to have to move it. But anyway, it goes like this. And then for the middle of it, the other, the, the sides bolt on just like the last piece we just did, but the center has a plate that sets on top. So you don't have to worry about trying to get a wrench up there. It's threaded. So all you have to do is thread this in and I'll show you guys once I get it in there, uh, what we're looking at. So this is what it looks like all snugged up. And I don't know if I said this, but it is three quarter uh, on all of this hardware, which sucks. You know, honestly, I wish that it was metric like the rest of it, but not a huge deal, but everything's tightened down. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and swing the control arm back up. And guys, I will tell you sometimes in the past, I've had issues with this because it's a little bit further back. So sometimes I have to put a ratchet strap on this and on the frame up front and pull the rear end forward in order to get these bolts in. So the next thing I'll show you guys is these bolts all in place and then we'll put the shock bolt in and then we'll come back and start working on the actual sway bar. I wanted to show you what was required to get this back in. So you can see I've got the bolt in this side, 
but if we go to the other side you can see that um, I had to put the ratchet strap on the rear end so I put it on the bottom here and I put it on the frame and tighten that up so this rear end the bottom of the rear end would roll forward in order for me to get that in place so now I'm gonna take the ratchet strap out and I may have to move it to a different location because obviously it's in the way right here uh, but we're ready to get these in and I'm pretty sure once I take this off the other side should hold it close enough where I can get it in place at this point we have both the bolts in on both sides uh, everything is in place and the brackets that we installed are all tight of course but our shocks and the bottom the lower a arm here have not been tightened but we'll do that with sus the suspension loaded what we need to do now is the sway bar actually has to push over towards the passenger side so in order to do that we need to grab a 10 millimeter and take the 10 out here and the 10 out on the other side and we need to move this over so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to you can see there's a hole on the other side that's going to be your new bolt hole on this side we're going to have to drill one so basically what we're doing is we're moving it over uh, roughly two inches so you're going to mark obviously it's going to come up a little bit as you can see these holes aren't um, lined up so you're going to measure um, over however far this one is you're going to do the same thing here and then you're going to keep them the same distance apart so i'm going to go grab my drill i'm going to drill that hole and then we can bolt we can basically move this d-ring over uh, that holds the sway bar and then we can line up our new sway bar end links once you get this off you can actually use it as a guide to see where you need to mark. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll line up this back hole, I'll actually put a bolt in it, and then we'll mark the front side and drill accordingly. Now once you get your hole drilled, you have just enough room to sneak that nut on the top side here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that ring back in place. The back you don't have any problems with, but the front, it is close. So you're gonna to have to use either some tape uh, to tape that nut on your wrench as you slide it in there, or sometimes if your fingers are small enough, you might be able to place it in there. But we're gonna go ahead and snug this up, just snug for now, because I need to be able to move the sway bar over after we get the end links in place. At this point, you can see that I have the factory bolt in the top, and then the bolt that they supplied in the bottom. Now, uh, the one with more angle to it goes to the passenger side. This is the driver's side. So the one with less angle goes to the driver's side, but you can see I've got it all bolted in place. Now we can go ahead and tighten this up. So the last couple things that I need to do is obviously we haven't tightened any of the bolts for the shocks. Uh, I did go ahead and put that 13 that holds the brake line in place. As you can see, I have the um, sway bar in links in and this guy has moved over. That's why you need to put this in. And the re main reason guys, they say that obviously you need shorter end links because you're going so low, but you also take the chance of hitting your pan hard rod. So moving this over gets it out of the way so you don't hit that. And um, so anyway, we need to torque these things. So the top and the bottom of the shock, they both go to 85 foot pounds. So 85 foot pounds up top here, 85 at the bottom. And you can see I have weight on the rear end now. Um, hopefully I'm not banging the camera on anything down here and making a bunch of noise, but 85 foot pounds there. And then your lower control arm. So these guys here that we took loose, that is actually 74 foot pounds on both the front and the rear and then 55 degrees past that. Um, that's the only spec that I could find and that is the GM spec. Chances are it may be a little bit different for this, but they do not list that in the kit. So just make sure they're snug, do not over tighten them. And then for this sway bar end links guys, um, I'm gonna go to 37. I also can find that, but on older vehicles and other things I've replaced um, these end links on, 37 foot pounds is uh, obviously what they use. So. Other than that, we need to put grease in these, which I haven't done yet, and then we will be able to set this thing down. So that will be the next thing you guys see. I'm going to take some time to clean it up, and uh, I'm going to go get it aligned, and then we will show you what we have all finished up. So I've got it all tightened up, but uh, there is one thing left, and that is to torque your wheels, guys. I just put these back on. I didn't torque them before, so I'm going to go ahead, go around, torque them all to 100 foot-pounds, and then we'll step back and take a look at this. At this point, guys, we are complete, and uh, I know I told you I was going to clean it up, but uh, we'll talk about here in a minute why I haven't cleaned it yet, but oh my gosh, what a difference. It's amazing just lowering a vehicle how much better it makes it look, and sorry if you guys are catching some wind. I don't know what is going on. It is windy and dry here, but uh, to let me know what you guys think. I think it looks absolutely incredible. Now, 
with that being said, would I like it to be a little lower? I think so. I think I wanted, um, I think I wanted like a, probably another inch all the way around is what I ended up wanting, uh, but I didn't get that. So um, thanks again for sending me the springs. Uh, like I said, a, a viewer reached out and gave me the rear springs. They are uh, listed. Everything that I use, guys, will be listed in the description down below. So if you guys are wanting to get this same drop. Um, so I did measure it, and it came down uh, about a little over four inches in the back, and it came down about three to three and a half in the front. So um, that is what you are getting if you go with this. Now, this is a two-wheel drive. So four-wheel drives are a little bit different. It seems like on a four-wheel drive, for some reason, that spring gets a little lower in the back. I'm not not really sure why but uh, I think it looks good guys so down the road maybe I'll drop it another inch you know I still have some adjustability in the front with uh, I could take the rings out and uh, you can actually get up to a three inch drop out of those rings and then two inches with the actual spindle for a total of five if you wanted obviously I would have to source a different spring if I did that now I will also tell you that this spring I think I said it earlier in the video but it is made for a trailblazer but it just rides better. So if you guys go to search that uh, link and it says it doesn't fit, it will fit. I just use it because it rides way better than the drop spring that are actually made for the Suburban and Tahoe. But, um, oh, we'll talk about why I didn't clean it up. So I was gonna clean this thing and it's not terrible. It's just really dusty here. But if you guys look at the top of my trim, you know, originally when I took the all the badging off, I said that I was going to leave this uh, just because it protects from door dings and whatnot. But if you can see, there's yellow on the top. And guys, that's not coming off. And the reason it's not coming off is because it is um, the clear is broke. Um, it's just all yellowed. And so the only way to properly fix it would be to um, just completely repaint those. And I'm not going to do that. So I think in the next video, uh, we might tackle a couple other things. We might end up taking those off. So we'll just have to see. But like I said, go down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about this thing. Once again, sorry for the wind noise. But um, if you like it, let me know. Also, a couple people keep asking about the running boards. No, I'm going to leave the running boards. To me, it looks kind of goofy if you take them off because the front's so low and then it goes up to the rockers and then it comes back down in the back. So to me, it just kind of completes it. Now, if they were clean, it would look a lot better, but go down in the comments. Like I said, let me know what you think. If you guys did like this video, if it was informative, hopefully it was, please smash that thumbs up button, guys. If you are not subscribed, you gotta get subscribed. We got a ton of other stuff going. This is just a daily driver that I had some parts on that one of you guys sent me and uh, I just had to buy a few odds and ends pieces. So go down, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.